Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. I'm so excited to be bringing this video to you. Today we are going to be talking all about how I track my reading using Notion. Yes, if you are new to my channel, you would not know how much of a Notion girly I am. I absolutely love Notion. I use it to plan my goals. I use it to track my reading. I use it to plan out my YouTube content. I use it in so many different ways and I absolutely love this productivity app. It is genuinely one of the best out there I think and I am going to be talking to you all about my notion template that I created specifically for readers like you and me this is a very in-depth template it's essentially your at-home goodreads and I'm just so excited to be talking about it with you so quickly I just want to address that last year I did put out a notion template as well but as I have used it over the past year there's been a lot of things I've tweaked that I have shown that I didn't really like in the last one and I feel like I've really optimized this template this time um, to be a little bit more simplified and I've added a few new features to just make it something that I feel works really well not only for me but I hopefully it works for you. I also want to put out the disclaimer that I am a Notion affiliate as well and that is something that is new this year. I have used Notion for years. I put out my template last year not being affiliated with them um, but I just want to let you know that up front. I do find that this app is incredible and I'm really really thankful to be an affiliate of them so I just wanted to give you that disclaimer as well. Now if you don't know what Notion is let me just give you a brief overview. It's essentially like Pinterest combined with Excel combined with Microsoft Word all in one. It's a master productivity app that can just like link databases. It can pull data. It can arrange data in many different views. It's just like a very comprehensive app that I love to use to track so many different things. It can be very daunting when you first get into Notion, but I have spent so many hours, so many hours learning how to use Notion, how to optimize databases, how to link data, all this kind of stuff. And I have created a reading template that I think is really, really helpful. I personally love it. I use it to track my reading. And it's something that also has a lot of longevity too. You can use this template over years. It's not just a one year type of thing, but this template specifically is optimized for 2024. So just wanna give that little bit of a disclaimer. If you are newer to Notion and don't really know how to use it, I just wanna tell you this video is not going to show you how to use Notion. I am going to be showing you the template that I created and how to use that template, but there are so many videos out there on YouTube that can show you exactly how to add properties, how to create databases, all that kind of stuff. We are not going to be going over that today. I'm just going to show you how to use this template. Now let's get into the video and let's get into this template. All right, so here is the Notion template for this year. I'm just going to do a brief scroll here to show you all the different features we have this year and the new look of the dashboard. I am really, really psyched about it. I just feel like this is simplified. It makes sense to my brain. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to be taking you through each and every feature on here. Let's just start off with the overall look. I did only do one style for this year and it's kind of like a lo-fi Studio Ghibli-esque style, kind of with the pastel, the blue. I just really only wanted to do one theme this year. I felt like last year when I did three, it was quite overwhelming for me and I feel like this theme is something I really, really love. And if you wanna customize this dashboard to be dark academia or to be, you know, cottagecore, whatever theme that you wanna do, you are more than welcome to do this. This. this is just a template for you to adjust and accommodate how you want to. And I have all the resources on here that if you want to change the, you know, cover photo, the icons, anything, it is totally up to you. These are not permanent once you get the template. Just kind of ignore this stuff up here for right now. This is going to be stuff that you can delete once you get into the template. Let's just start with the dashboard. So I split this into three columns and this is optimized for like desktop and like tablet view, I guess. Um, on your phone, it can be a little bit more smushed and kind of like not as easy to use. Okay, so what we have on the leftmost column here, we have this month's reads. This is your monthly TBR and it's basically optimized here to show the book and then essentially if you have completed this book yet on your TBR. This little database here is backlinked into the My Reading Hub and the Your TBR database. We will get all into all of these in a second but yes this this part is and so is the currently reading. It's all backlinked to other databases. Next we have little bookish reminders you can put here whether you have a, like a live show or a book club or remembering a pre-order comes out or you know any kind of bookish reminder you are free to put here. We have this cute 
cute little picture here. In the middle column, we have a cute little book gift here. And then this is a currently reading database here in a gallery view. It also has the author's name and the percentage done you are with it. We're gonna get in more into the databases here. This is also backlinked into your library up here, which I will explain in a little bit. Next, I have a little lo-fi YouTube video. Personally, I love lo-fi girl. I love listening to lo-fi music when I'm reading. Again, you can customize it to add your favorite ASMR room, you know, piano music, whatever you want, you can change this video out. Personally, I think this fits the theme and it allows you to listen to some music while you're watching, while you're, you know, doing your little Notion template. You can also delete this too if you don't want to have a YouTube video there. Next up on the rightmost side, we have all of the databases here. I want to emphasize to you, do not delete anything below this line here. All of these are databases that are represented in your reading hub. This is the bread and butter of the template. And if you delete those, I have nothing to help you with, okay? You can obviously customize how you want to with the dashboard, but just do not delete the databases. <laughs> Next thing we have here is this little widget to show you how many books you've read this year. I just wanna tell you, I apologize to anyone who bought the template last year. I did not realize it is up to you to go create your own account on Indify to get your own customized widget here. So when you get the template, this is not going to be on the template. You have to go to Indify.com, which I'm gonna have an instruction for you to do to make your own widget. I personally love this. I think it's just a quick and dirty way to track how many books you've read this year. Next up, we have a habit tracker, which I'm so excited about. Notion added this new feature this year called buttons. Um, I'm going to be getting into this a little bit later, but this is a way more simplified tracker than I had last year. And I think this is like one of the best things that I did for the Notion template this year. I'm super excited about it, super excited to show you how to do it. But this is like just a quick habit tracker going down. You have your habit log. So this is everything like habit tracking in 2024. We will get in more into this later. And then the last thing I have here is just a brief overview of your reading goals. You can definitely put more than one reading goal in here and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But yeah, I just wanted this dashboard to be able to be viewed in essentially one screen. Yeah, you have to scroll a little bit, but essentially you can view the entire thing in one and I wanted to just be able to have everything on here. Easy access, easy to see, and easy to get to the places you want to go. Okay, let's get into these databases. So this My Reading Hub is essentially your bread and butter. This is where you are going to go to track all of your reading. All of these are the databases that are reflected in the My Reading Hub. Okay, so let's click into the My Reading Hub. Okay, so let's just do a quick overview here. These are pretty self-explanatory. First, we have the My Library database. This is everything you've ever read or you are currently reading. Next, you have the My TBR database. This database is dedicated to your TBR. Next, you have the series tracker dedicated to tracking your series. And then you have your 2024 reading statistics here. And then you have your 2024 reading goals down here. Okay, so let's first start off with My Library. Like I said, this is everything that you are currently reading or you have ever read. So I'm just going to go over quick all of the views of the library and then we're going to input an example of a book. So first we have 2024. This represents everything that you have read in 2024. You have a caw pile page where you can calculate a rating based on the caw pile formula. All of this is like mathematician formula to be able to come up with a caw pile rating. Next you have currently reading. This is everything you are currently reading. You have read this month. This tracks everything that you have read this month. Complete Red Library, everything that you have ever read, and Master View. This view encompasses everything in this database. Hi, it's me from the future. I actually ended up adjusting two things on the My Library database. The first being that 2024 now is filtered to only show things that have been read or the status has been complete. So you do not see your currently reading on here. If you wanna look at your currently reading, you have to go to the currently reading database, okay? The next thing is I added a view on here called DNF. This basically shows all the books that you've DNF'd and it is filtered by the it, it, whether or not you've checked dnf or not. So I don't know why I didn't put that in there earlier, but I thought it was a really useful view. So let's pretend that you just started a book and you want to put it under your currently reading. Okay, so let's go to the currently reading tab here and let's say you just read Babel. Now the easiest way to input a book, I think, is to press open here in this little side peak version. This, I believe, is the easiest way to fill in all these properties. What happens if you try and do it in the database is that the title does not scroll with you. So it, you could get like kind of mixed up as you get into like the nitty gritty over here. So let's pretend that we just read Babel. Let's 
that's open in this little side peak. We want to keep this cute, right? So we want to add a little icon. So you go to add icon and let's do, um, I don't know, just a book icon. There we go. Now you are able to fill in every property to your heart's desire. Again, you can add properties, you can hide properties, you can take properties away. You are able to do this to your heart's extent. I literally think I have 40 properties in here and you can customize this however much you want. You know, if you want to add a property in here of how much you spent on the book, you could totally do that too. I just want to run through some of the properties really quick. Some are pretty self-explanatory. Author status here. Um, you have the status, whether you're reading it or not. I have here an auto automatic percentage fill in. So if you are currently on page 200 and there's 500 pages in the book, that percentage is automatically going to update for you. This formula is only available to input through the current pages and the pages here. You cannot manually input the percentage done. So that kind of is a difficulty with audiobooks or with Kindle books. There was just too much going on when I tried to be, have it manually done and I just decided to stick with the current pages. So you're gonna have to put in whatever page you're on if you want to show the percentage, okay? Next you have hours, if you listen to this on audio, you have date started and date finished. Let's just say I started this then and I finished it today. Automatically calculates how many days that you re took to read it. The few most important properties in these databases that link it to other databases is this month finished here, the add to 2024 tracker and the series title. So these are all related to other other databases in this reading hub, okay? Do not delete these properties or else it's not going to link to these other databases. So month finished, you have to manually input what month you finished this in. So let's say I just, I finished it in January, 2024, okay? So now when I go down to the reading statistics here, it's going to show that I read Babel in January, 2024. The next most important one is this add to 2024 reading tracker. If I finish this book and I want to record it as a book that I'm putting towards my 2024 goals, I have to go to add 2024 reading tracker property and select 2024 yearly reading goal and it will automatically show up in this yearly reading goal tracker here, okay? Those are very important. The other one is if this was part of a series, you can manually select what series it is a part of. If you wanna create a series, you would essentially type in throne of glass. You can just type it in and it'll create a new throne of glass page for you. So next we have star rating. You have to put in the number here. So you could literally put like 2.45 or whatever you want your star rating to be. You can make, whatever star rating up you want, okay? We have a slot for it, whether or not you DNF'd it. Again, a little series delineation here, whether or not standalone or what type of series it is, number in series. You have, it's fiction or nonfiction, the genres, the audience, the formats, a publisher type, publisher year, everything about that. I also have a read for column, whether you read it for a readathon or not. You can input whatever readathon you want here. Let's say you wanted to do a fantasy romance book club or something. I know these are not specific to Babel, but like I'm just showing you how to do this. So, and then you could create a new book club there. You could put diverse author, um, the representation. Again, this is not a comprehensive list by any means. You are able to add options as you see fit. A brief description here and then the caw pile rating. So that's an overview of all of the properties in the main database. Now, if you wanna add a cover, so let's say you put this as currently reading and you want to see this book on your homepage with the cover. So you would click add cover here. You would put change cover and then you you would put a link and I already copied a link from the internet for this and I would I just put the link here paste the link and there's the book cover now if I go back to the home page, you can see there's Babel and there's how much I've read of it. So it's all interlinked and it's all pretty nice. And I just, I, I'm just obsessed with it. I love how it looks. I love how it's turned out. One of the most important things of these databases as well is the filters. Now I have customized all of these filters to be able to like filter out the views, right? Of the database. If you accidentally delete a filter, or anything in the instructions is all of the filters that I originally put in. So you just go there and refer to whatever I put. So one of the cool features that Notion updated this year is that the filters now are able to auto update with the months. So for read this month, this is going to show everything that you have read in the current month that we are currently in. But let's say we finished Babel this month. So we would change the status to read. Now it's going to show up in the read this month because we put the date finished as December 18th here. This is really nice because it's going to auto update the months as we go along and you don't have to manually change the filter. There is one 
one database that you do have to manually change the filter for, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. That is a quick overview of my library. Now let's move on to my TBR. I just want to point out that my TBR is completely new. This is not something from the old template, and this is not linked to the my library here. I decided to do an entirely different database for my TBR because I just felt like it ended up clustering the original database so much and I just felt like the TBR needed to be in a separate space, okay? So I want you to note that if you put something into the My TBR here, you're going to have to add it again once once you are currently reading the book or you are done with the book. This is not going to auto-populate into My Library, okay? You're gonna have to take this book off of your TBR and you're going to have to input it into your library here. So let's just do a quick overview of every view in the My TBR. So we have the entire TBR, everything you've ever put into this database is on the entire TBR. Next, you have my monthly TBR. This is filtered by the this month column checked. I did not put a automatic um, updating date filter on this. You have to manually check what books you want to read this month, okay, to make it show up on here. This view is also reflected on your home dashboard. Next, I have 24 books in 2024. This is a gallery view of anything that you have designated to be read in the 24 books of 2024. Next, we have physical. This is anything that you have marked as acquired in as physical here. We have e-reader TBR, anything that you have marked as acquired ebook. Next, you have library loans, anything that you marked as acquired library. And lastly, your wish list, any book that is on your TBR that you do not own or do not have or are hoping to get. So let's input a book on our TBR here. So first thing you would do is create a new row. Then you're gonna put in whatever book you wanna read, Atomic Habits. This database doesn't have as many properties. So, I mean, you can open it in the side peak if you want, or you can just input it in the database directly. So you would put, I have have this book physical. I have not completed it. I want to read it in January. Read for, let's say I want to read it in 24 and 2024. And let's say I want to read it this month. Okay. Now we'll go to my monthly TBR. Because we checked we wanted to read it this month, it is here. And because we checked it as something we want to read in our 24 books in 2024, here it is again. Now, again, if you want to add the book cover here, you are more than welcome to do that. You would just press add cover and then you would import the link for the cover. Also, now because we checked it as something that we want to read this month, if we go back home, boom, there's Atomic Habits for my monthly TBR. So this is a fairly self-explanatory database. Again, the my TBR is not linked to my library. So you are going, once you finish Atomic Habits or you start reading Atomic Habits, you are going to have to input it into my library. Next database we have here is my series tracker. This is the same exact database as the original uh, Notion template that I used. There are no changes to it, but let's just go over all of the views again. So we have all series. This is all series that you have inputted it here. Next, we have all books that are in this database, and then you have a board view organized by series here. Again, this series tracker is linked up to my library. Let's just pretend that Song of Achilles was part of a series. So we would go over to series title here. Let's say, just pretend it's part of the the Broken Earth Trilogy. All right, now, if we go down here, you have the Broken Earth Trilogy as a series, and there's a Song of Achilles. If you want to add a new series, you can just press new and type in Keeper of the Lost Cities, and then you would fill out the statistics for the series, whether or not it's in progress, what type of series it is, what genre it is. I feel like my series tracker doesn't have as much going on as these other two databases are, but it's still really great if you are a big series reader. Hi, it's me from the future again. Two things I wanted to point out with the my series tracker that I forgot to mention. The first one is that the all books view, this is a view that is directly linked to your my library. So what is shown in the all books view is any book you have marked in my library that is classified as a series, okay? It must be classified in a series to show up in this view. Just because you put it in here attached to a series does not mean it's going to show up in here. You have to make sure that the book is tagged as a series in the My Library. The second thing I want to point out is that I actually added a view in the series tracker called the progress view. This view shows the progress that you have made with all series that you are currently reading. So we have a not started column, an in progress, caught up, and completed column, and a DNF'd column. Just a way to help you 
delineate how what progress you are in the series that you are currently reading. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, next database we're going to be talking about is the 2024 reading statistics. Now, if you are new to Notion, I just want to let you know graphs are like not a thing in Notion. Everything statistic wise that I am showing you here is all numbers. Okay, if you're a visual person, Google Sheets or like Excel would probably be a better option for you to like visualize the data better. But Notion can tell you like the number like the sheer number of things that you do. So I'm just gonna go over, these are very high level statistics. I tried to get a little bit more granular, but Notion only lets you do so much with the capabilities it has. So the 2024 view has a row for each year. Now all of these are backlinked to the My Library in the month finished category here. Because we tag these two books as finished in January 2024, they're showing up on the reading statistics spreadsheet here. This first column is the books that you have read this month. It totals the number of books that you read this month. It totals the page count for both of those books. It totals how many hours you listened to the books on audio. It totals your average rating. Again, why you can get very granular with the rating here. If you want to put 4.25156, it will calculate the average rating based on that. Next, you have the total number of DNFs, and then you have a spot to put your favorite book of the month. All of these statistics I did not change from last year. All of these are still the same ones. And then if you want to look at your overall yearly statistics, this would be in this column here. So we have total books read. If you just go to the bottom, there's a sum here. It'll calculate the total books read. It'll calculate the total number of pages read here. It'll calculate the number of hours listened and the average rating of books throughout the entire year. And then how many books you DNF throughout the year too. This next view is the this month. This basically shows what books you have read for this month. So this is a filter you do have to manually change every month. Once you flip into February, you have to go to the filter, go to month and year red, and then you would put, I got a can't spell, February 2024. 20, and that will, it will show the February 2024 reading statistics for you. And then last one we have here is all time. So this is anything that you have ever put into this spreadsheet. Again, like I said, this spreadsheet is optimized for 2024, but if you wanted to adjust this for 2025 or future years to come, you could track all time here. So that is a reading statistics spreadsheet going down here to 2424 reading goals. This is something new for this year that I have added. I'm super excited about this because I feel like this helps track your reading goals a little bit better than just like writing them down. Down. So I have a yearly goal here that you can change to whatever you want. If you want to put 100 books here, it'll automatically calculate the percentage here. So to add a new goal, essentially you would click new here. Uh, let's say you want to read more nonfiction. So first you would put in the goal, you would input the number of books you want to read to meet that goal. So let's say you wanted to do 10 nonfiction books. Now, anytime you input a nonfiction book, up at the top here. Let's just pretend Babel was a nonfiction book, okay? You would have to go to the category add to 2024 tracker. You would click on this and let's say you also wanted to add this into the more nonfiction goal. You would click that here and it shows up there and it shows you your progress towards the reading goal. And then also this will show up on the reading dashboard as well. So let's go back to the dashboard and I can show you there it shows to read more nonfiction. And again, you can change the cover photo to whatever you want it to be. That is all of the views for the reading hub. I am really, really proud of this. I am really happy with what I've created. And I feel like, again, I optimize this to be a little bit more simplified and a bit more cohesive throughout the entire template. So the My Reading Hub encompasses the My Library database, the My TBR database, the Series Tracker, the Reading Statistics, and the Reading Goals. If you want to individually go into each of these databases, you are more than welcome to quick go to My TBR, and then this is just the view of the database itself. You can add other views, whatnot, and but if you add a view on this database, it's not necessarily going to be showing up in the My Reading Hub. You have to manually go in and add that view to the My Reading Hub page. But if you just want to quick go into the database to view the database like it's just easy and there for you to do that. The last bit I want to talk to you about is the habit tracker. So let's scroll down here and go to that. So Notion added a really cool feature this year called buttons, which is really amazing and makes this so much easier. I first want to say to use this habit tracker, this is kind of hard to explain, but I, I hope I get this point across. If you want to use this habit tracker for 2024, do not start tracking your reading until January 1, 2024. The 2024 habit log 
here. It's only based on this 365 number. It is not based on any dates or anything specific. So it's only tracking the next 365 inputs you put into the habit track. All I'm trying to tell you is do not start this until January 1st, 2024. If you want to accurately track your 2024 reading. Okay. So let's do an example of you read today. You toggle this little thing down. You would press new day and it's going to add a new day. It'll auto populate the date here. Let's say you read physically. So you would click the physical reading. It's going to change on here that you read physically and it adds this little relation category here. Next, let's say you wanted to add audio. You would press the audio listening there and there it goes. It's audio automatically tracks in the audio as well. Okay, this little database automatically updates for each week. It has a really nice auto updating filter. Now, if you go into the 2024 habit log, it's going to show that you read one day and it just says 0% here because like one out of 365 is like essentially 0%, but it's going to start tracking your progress as you continue to input habits throughout the rest of the year. Say you accidentally clicked audio and you didn't mean to click it. All you would have to do is go down to the entry that was the date that is today's date. You would unclick audio and then you also have to manually undo the audio listening here and that will take it off of the audio listening in the 2024 habit log. So that is that. I hope it makes sense to you, okay? And then also on the this week, these little totals at the bottom show how much you have read for the total week. So if if you have all seven days input here, it'll show that you checked 100%. That is the little habit tracker that I made. It's not like absolutely perfect habit tracker, but I feel like I optimized it pretty well for Notion's interface. If you want to see, you know, how many days you read throughout the year, you can go into the 2024 habit log. You could also go into the habit tracker specifically, and it will show you all of the dates that you have input in here as well. So that is how I am tracking my reading this year and the updated Notion template for 2024. If you are interested in this template, the link is down below. This is a template that I have worked so extremely hard on. The amount of time that I have put into this template, into learning Notion's interface, has probably totaled over 80 to 100 hours of work that I have put into this. And I believe my knowledge and my value is worth something. So I am charged for this template, just like I did last year. I am going to leave the link down below. If you are also new to Notion, there is also a link down below for you to sign up with Notion. Again, I am affiliated with Notion but I want to really emphasize I would do this non-affiliated with Notion as well. I have created this template before non-affiliated. I have been using this product for years and years and years and I really believe it is an incredible, incredible app. Now, I just want to thank anyone who does purchase this template and who does support me. You have no idea how much this means to me. I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I cannot thank you enough for supporting me and supporting my channel um, and I really, really hope this does offer some value to you. If you have questions questions about this template specifically that I did not answer in the video or are not answered in the instructions, please leave them down below. You can also DM me on Instagram if you have other questions. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the template and happy reading for 2024. Thank you guys so much and peace and love. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.